Hi, and welcome to Azure Data Explorer Shorts. I'm Vincent with the Azure Data Explorer team. Today, we're going to talk about cache and retention policies. To talk about those two topics, it's helpful to come back to our Azure Data Explorer deployment model, which we've seen where we have engine nodes. Here we have six composing our cluster. Then we have extents or data shards that contains the data of our tables. Those extents tend to be assigned to a node so that they are cached on the cluster. Now this picture is a little bit simplified. It assumes that we have enough space on our cluster to cache everything. So let's look at a more general picture here. So let's remove the association. And what we have here is at the bottom, we have the blob storage. So every cluster has a blob storage account that's hidden and managed by the service and all the extents are stored on the blob storage. Those are called cold extents because they are in cold storage. And some of the extents are cached in the ADX compute nodes and they're called hot extents. And the color coded red and blue, red for hot and blue for cold. And in general, only a portion of the extent will be cached on the compute nodes. Now, if we do a query and our query targets a couple of extents, it's necessary for the compute nodes to load those extents or at least parts of it to consult the index. And maybe doing so, it takes too much space on the cluster, so they need to evict other extents that were previously hot. And when we run another query that will attack other extents, we need to evict a couple of extents we just loaded, load other ones. So you see the idea is that if we don't manage the cache properly, we're going to keep doing this dance of back and forth of loading and evicting extents. And of course, that's quite expensive because we're talking about big data. Also, it would lead to a very inconsistent experience. So depending when you do your query, who is using the cluster at the same time than you, the speed or the performance of the query would vary widely depending on which extents were loaded or hot versus cold. And you could even run into timeouts at some point. If you load, you try to load a lot of data, a lot of extents at the same time, it might time out because it takes too long. So this is what a cache policy does. It helps us to control the caching happening on our cluster to give priority to some extent versus others. But in the case of retention, it's about how long do we keep the extents in the cluster or in the blob storage at all. So at some point, the cluster will just delete the data depending on the retention policy. To go a bit deeper, we need to understand where the hot cache lives. The last cache lives on the engine nodes. So let's look at a cluster. Here I have a dev cluster with only one instance. But if I would like to scale up, I could choose between different SKUs. So basically, those are VMs available in Azure that have been vetted to be part of Azure Data Explorer because they perform well. There are a couple of columns, but the one I want to focus on is the cache column. And the cache is basically the size of the local disk on those VMs. So you can see if I scroll down in the compute optimized VMs, we have growing size of cache. As we move to storage optimize, the size of the cache increase even more. So this cache is basically the local disk. A local disk is a disk that is present physically on the VM or on the host of the VM. So that's very fast access. So that gives Azure Data Explorer this extra edge of performance. Those are SSD disk. And basically, if you want to know about the cache you have on your cluster, you take the cache per node. Let's say for the L16S here, I would have a cache of 3,500 gigabytes. Multiply that by the number of instances. Let's say I have two instances, I would have a cache of 7,000 gigabytes. Now that may sound like a lot, but depending on the data you load, if you load terabytes and terabytes of data, at some point you run out of hot cache on your cluster, and this is when the caching system will evict some data. So an important metric to look at is the cache utilization. We can see right in the overview, you can see here my cluster has barely no data in it, but as you ingest data on your cluster, this percentage will rise. And the rule of thumb is to keep it under 80%. Now that we've seen that, a sensible strategy might be to say, hey, let's have lots of cash and make sure that we always have the best performance. But of course, we've just seen that this cash comes with local disk belonging to engine nodes. And engine nodes, of course, are charged. So the cost increase as you do that. So if you just go wild, you're going to pay a lot for your cluster. You basically need to manage the cash. Now, there's a very simple heuristic to do that since Azure Data Explorer is often used as a time series database. As we ingest data in time, extents are created along the axis of time, basically. But we often query the latest data. 
So a sensible caching policy would leverage that fact and say, let's prioritize the extents that are the latest up to a certain point, because we know that most of our queries are going to hit that. And with time, what would happen is that as we ingest data and time moves on, we would slowly move forward and get most recent extents and drop the, the oldest extents from our cache. This is what the cache policy does. We define the window of time we want to keep in the past for each table or at the database level. Now the retention policy, very similar thing. We basically define a window of time in the past. We want to keep data in the cluster at all, like cold and hot. And if we superpose the concept of caching policy, as we would ingest data and as time moves on, we would drop extent from the cluster altogether. And to get a little deeper, let's look at the cache policy command, the alter section, and we see basically it's all about a time span for the hot cache, basically a window of time in the past that we want to define as the cache policy. Cache policy could be at the database or table level. So the database at the database level, those will apply to all the tables that don't have a cache policy defined, and the table policy would overwrite. And looking at retention policy, very similar in that case, we need to pass a JSON because we define a self-delete period, so a window of time in the past. And we also define a recoverability Boolean, so enabled or disabled, where if it is enabled, we have the self-delete semantics. So when the data is no longer available, it's actually recoverable for 14 days by opening a support ticket. Now that we've seen that, a couple of exception scenarios. What if the cache policy doesn't work for me? Two scenarios pops to mind. The first one, is when we want to do something like forensic. So let's say we have telemetry. We always query the data from the last week, for the example. But once in a while, there's a cyber attack or something. We want to look a month ago, three months ago, to do some correlation. That's called a point in time query. So we'll go interrogate Azure Data Explorer for one or a few extents in the past. And basically, that, that's OK, because we're going to load the extent in an ad hoc fashion. There'll be cache in ad hoc fashion. It might be evicted at some point, but it's going to work fine, because it's just a few extents. For larger aggregation, let's say, again, for our scenario, we look at the telemetry for the last week, but we have three years of telemetry. And some at some point in time, somebody wants to do a historical time series analysis on it using the advanced analytics of Custo platform. Then it would be a very bad idea because that would load a bunch of extents uh, from the cold cache. It would be very slow and non-performance. What we recommend to do in that time, increase your cache policy for that table if you still have space on your cluster. If you don't have space on your cluster, do that, plus temporarily scale out your cluster to have more hot cache available. Alternatively, what you could do is use a follower database. So you basically create another cluster that follows your primary cluster, it would be completely independent, and you could have all the cache uh, you want and control it independently of that. So when to override cache policy? The default is 31 days of hot cache. If that's OK for you, leave it there. Uh, as we've seen, you can do that at the table or database level. But when would you override it? Basically, when our queries hit more or less than this 31 days of hot cache. If our typical queries hit for three months, we want a larger cache policy. If we hit only the last week, then it's useless to keep the last 31 days. On tables that aren't queried at all, we, would, we can set the cache policy to 0. Similarly, for retention policy, we have a default of 1,000 days. When we need longer retentions, very often in industries such as banking, we need to have seven years of retention. For landing tables, where we have an update policy, for debugging purposes, I tend to leave the retention to like one day so that we can always go back and look at the data if need to. And that's it for our topic today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. Otherwise, please follow us on those platforms and until next time.